Whole Cake Island is one of the most controversial One Piece arcs ever. For the record, I do not enjoy this arc. I think it is one of the least impressive arcs Oda had written since beginning One Piece over 20 years ago. I am by no means a fanboy of the Whole Cake Island arc. However, I find that many of the arguments for the reasons the arc isn't good are invalid and unreasonable. I don't think these arguments hold any weight when compared to similar situations we have been in in the story previously, if put in the proper context. Some of these points indicate a lack of understanding in the point the narrative was trying to make, but for the sake of time, I will only be addressing two of those arguments in this video, starting with the Sanji is a disappointment argument. First of all, some out of universe context. During the initial release of the Zo arc, Ichida Oda, the author of One Piece, came out stating that we were approaching the year of Sanji. In terms of epic battles, Sanji hasn't exactly shined since the time skip. Many fans became incredibly hyped over the possibility of seeing Sanji have a few real battles. They thought this would be the arc where Sanji got an epic fight, and he would finally get a double new, you could say. However, as we entered the Whole Cake Island arc and began to be introduced to Sanji's family, the Vim Smokes, it became more and more apparent to me that this arc and this year of Sanji had nothing to do with getting a good fight. It became very apparent, at least to me, that the whole purpose of this year of Sanji was not to make Sanji seem stronger or give him an epic battle, but to expand on both his character and his backstory. The whole Kick Island arc was not about giving Sanji a cool fight. It was about developing his character. The argument you typically see with Sanji in this arc is that he's incredibly disappointing, but I find he's only disappointing if you look at him through the perspective of wanting to see him be in a cool fight. You see fans calling him Lanji, starting with an L because he's always taking the L. However, people are ignoring all the amazing character moments Sanji has had and the amazing story he had gone through in this arc. This arc not only expands on Sanji's backstory, but makes his role in the crew ten times more apparent. On the way to Whole Cake Island, the Straw Hats almost die because Sanji is not with them to cook them food, and none of them know how to cook emphasizing the importance Sanji had in the narrative. Before the events of Zo, Sanji was content to never see or hear from his family ever again in his life. His family tortured him. They wrapped his head in metal and put him in a cave. His brothers would beat him up, and his father showed him no real affection or love. While his sister Reiju did care, she would never allow herself to be seen showing him compassion and to not put herself in harm's way. Her safety and her happiness was more important to her than him. There was no one to truly comfort Sanji when his mother passed away. He had nothing. His family allied with Big Mom and threatened to murder Zeph if he didn't comply and blackmailed him into leaving his true family. But despite all of this, Sanji still chose to save them. This is an absolutely amazing character moment for Sanji. Sanji went from never wanting to see or hear from his family again to taking on high-ranking members of the Big Mom Pirates in order to rescue them. And beside what I just mentioned, the arc is filled with small little amazing character moments for Sanji. My personal favorite being when he subconsciously filled the bento with the favorite foods of the Straw Hat Pirates. While Sanji didn't get an epic fight this arc, his arcs truly showcase what an amazing character Sanji is. He developed as a character and he had tons of great character moments. I have partaken in the Sanji King of Elves joke in streams and comments before, but at the end of the day, Sanji is one of the best things about this arc. His backstory also ties in amazingly well to the scenes of the arc that Craft Dwarfs explains amazingly in a video I will link in the description box down below. Sanji is one of the best parts of the Whole Cake Island arc because of his character and amazing character moments by Oda not because he had a cool fight. It's almost like the Whole Kick Island arc is Odo's way of saying that Sanji doesn't need cool fights to be a really good character. Before this arc, Sanji was cool, but this arc has added so much to him as a character and makes him far more interesting. So personally, I don't think it's fair to say Sanji has been a disappointment in this arc 
just because he didn't get a cool fight. Because he delivered in literally every other area. Now let's move on to the more complicated argument. Consequences and stakes. Once again, the out of universe contest. Though Yonko have been hyped up since Water 7. The real argument is that Luffy and the Straw Hats have suffered no consequences for entering Big Mom territory that affect them personally on a great level. The Straw Hat pirates haven't lost anything. Yes, Pedro died, but Pedro wasn't a Straw Hat. In Chapter 900, we got teased that the Sunny was destroyed, and then it turned out it wasn't. And I wouldn't call this argument completely invalid, but more so unreasonable given how deep we are into this story. This kind of thing has happened on a smaller scale before. I would like to ask you, the viewer, to go back in time with me and pretend we are reading One Piece during the release of the East Blue Arc. You have been reading One Piece for 49 weeks, and the Straw Hats have been skating by. They've won every single battle, and eventually, you meet this man, Dracula Mihawk. Mihawk is the greatest swordsman in the world and defeats Loro with a pocket knife. It is said that he destroyed an entire fleet of an armada just by swinging his sword. This guy is a million times more powerful than anything up until this point in the story. We know nothing about this guy besides that his name is Dracula Mihawk, and then he's really, really, really powerful, and then Loro wants to kick his ass. However, he decides to let Loro go, he hypes up Luffy Gold becoming Pirate King a little bit more, and then he leaves. And besides for Loro mentioning him and how he wants to beat him one day, we hear nothing of this guy for a long time. Then, in chapter 114, Vivi reveals that Crocodile is a member of the Seven Warlords of the Sea, or the Shishibukai. Crocodile is hyped up in a very similar manner to the way you would hype up Big Mom. With Mihawk the state of Loro, it is very clear that these characters can lose, that they are not the strongest people in this universe. Because remember, prior to Mihawk, none of them have ever suffered a bone-crushing defeat. It is now clear that that is a possibility, that it is possible for them to lose. And with Crocodile mentioned in One Piece Chapter 114, it takes 49 chapters to arrive at Alabasta. Putting that in the context of how long One Piece has been running, that is a really long time. This was the first time in the story the audience really had to wait to see a villain for a long time. And when the Straw do eventually arrive at Alabasta, we know how the arc ends. They win. There are no real consequences. The only real consequence of the Alabasta arc is that Vivi doesn't join the crew, but that's not a result of Crocodile's actions. In fact, the Straw Hats gain an unbelievably valuable crew member in Robin, who eventually becomes arguably the most important person on the crew that is required to achieve Luffy's goal. There isn't much of a difference between what happened then and what is happening now in the manga. The only difference is that in the manga, Luffy just kept trying until he eventually beat Crocodile. While in Whole Cake Island, Luffy's whole big thing was defeating one of Big Mom's commanders, not Big Mom herself, which probably made Whole Cake Island better in that regard than Alabasta. There was no reason to believe Whole Cake Island and the Nyonko arcs were going to be any different than any other arc in this story. And, to be quite honest with you, for One Piece, there have been a lot of consequences in this arc. Pedro, unless God forbid Oda brings him back, is dead. And that alone, for Oda to kill a character, is something he does so rarely that I think that is enough. But no, Oda also had Jinbei be forced to stay behind to save his crew, and that is a massive, massive deal. Oda does not normally have things like this happen. The Straw Hats normally win in every conceivable way. One Piece has always been like this, and to affect anything else at this point is kind of unreasonable. Because them fighting a Nyonko alone isn't enough of a valid reason to affect something different. Do I think the Whole King Island arc is good? No. But as I explained in this video, the Sanji thing isn't really a problem, in my opinion, and the stakes and consequences thing had kind of always been that way, so I'm not really sure what people were expecting to be different. I don't think that argument is invalid, I just think it's a very unreasonable to complain about that at 
this point in the story. You're 901 chapters in and this low stakes scenario had been there since chapter 1. So what did you expect? So while the criticism is incredibly valid, at this point, why bother? As I stated earlier, Oda basically did the same thing with Crocodile way back when, just with a much smaller amount of hype. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe for more videos like this, and follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below, and I hope you have a great day.